So today I just want to talk about a few things regarding chemical labels. As users of agricultural chemical products, we are legally required to read and understand the label. Anything that carries a do not or a must is legally enforceable. Failure to comply with a label is an offence. And even though the active ingredient may be the same for different products, the labels will vary. So it's important to read the label for the actual product that you're using. So some of the things that we find on the label, the signal heading tells us how dangerous the product is. The trade name, the active constituent, the mode of action is really important for our resistance management. Then we have a section called the statement of claims. Now this is the thing that this product is actually registered to do. So it may list specific pests or crops or situations. So really important when you're choosing a product to make sure that it's going to do what you want it to do and that it's registered for that. In addition to the main label on the side of the drum, many products also have a smaller booklet attached. This also forms part of the legal label that you're required to comply with. These can often be in quite small print, so if you're having any trouble reading it, just ask your reseller for an A4 size copy. When you open this little booklet up, you'll see it contains a lot of information, um, particularly in relation to how to use the product effectively and safely. Things like compatibility and mixing requirements, the rates to be used, the situations, the crops and the pests that are treated. I often see people not checking the rates and sometimes those rates may change if, if product labels are updated. Equipment to be used or not to be used, spray qualities, spray drift restraints, resistance warnings. There could also be information about withholding periods, export slaughter intervals and plant back periods. There's also information on safety and PPE. Some labels will specify that you must identify if there's any beehives within a certain distance from where you're going to apply that product. And it's a requirement on that label to notify those beekeepers. And the best way to do that is by using the Bee Connected app or the Bee Connected website. You may be keeping great records in compliance with the state-based requirements for your area, but you must read that label and see if there are extra federal requirements. They are over and above your state-based requirements. Another key area of the labels is mandatory no spray zones or the buffer zones and that may change with different products, different application techniques and it may also change dramatically depending on the tank mix you use. There may be some very specific warnings on there, in particular with our group I herbicides, drift restraints and managing that spray drift risk. Things like do not apply during conditions or with equipment that is likely to cause drift or always apply when the wind speed is between 3 and 15 or 3 and 20 kilometres an hour, depending on the product. And remembering that that's daytime conditions only. Things like spray quality, those products need to be used with nozzles and equipment and in a manner that achieves a certain spray quality. A lot of those labels will say, do not apply during surface temperature inversions. So it's really important that you're able to identify when there is or isn't a surface temperature inversion present. So in summary, there is an awful lot of information on a chemical label, but ensuring that you read those instructions and comply with them is the best way for you to use that product effectively and safely.